Hey YouTube, welcome back to Axes and Allies, the Garrison, uh, coming to you from the bunker here in Rochelle Park, New Jersey, with another episode of the YouTube Wars, Season 2. Alright, so it is Japan's turn, and of course I am the Commander-in-Chief of the Japanese Imperial Forces for this game, uh, second installment of the second season of the YouTube Wars. Alright, so as you guys well know, J uh, Germany and uh, the Soviet Union already made their moves, and it is now... Uh, Japan's turn. However, I must say that Germany, uh, who is uh, uh, being commanded by Dutch Lancaster, had a phenomenal uh, first round where the British uh, air forces and the majority of the British uh, naval uh, assets in the Atlantic were literally wiped out, okay, with very minimal losses for uh, the German uh, uh, Air Forces and Navy, okay? So as a consequence, Germany is poised to have an excellent, a fantastic start for its first turn, round one, okay? So now, having said that, the Germans were still able to, to capitalize and effectively uh, throttle in or push in uh, a good number of uh, forces up against the border against the Soviet Union, of course. Needless to say, though, uh, VK Cowboy, who is the commander-in-chief of the Russian forces, uh, had a response. And even though the Germans did not attack uh, Russia round one, turned out that VK Cowboy had a card up his sleeve. And the card up his sleeve was that he actually, like many players sometimes, they sometimes when playing Russia, they tend to fall back. Okay. What VK Cowboy does, though, is that he actually reinforces his frontier, at least the territories that matter the most. He did fall back on a few, but he did create two strong points uh, up against, basically, the border with Germany, okay? So, it's going to get interesting. I, I know that uh, Cowboy is uh, very ingenious, and he has something up his sleeve, and I think he's thinking of uh, potentially going on the offense uh, against Germany. In any case, it's a very interesting uh, strategy that Cowboy is using. Now, as for myself, you guys are to find out today what... I will do okay so it'll be definitely interesting uh to see and i have a few uh i don't know uh, i like to think surprises but uh for some people if you're an experienced player the moves that i may make today may be just a routine uh out of the box uh moves or tactics or strategies that uh, some of you are already implementing okay for me it's a little different because i haven't used this strategy in the past okay so for me it's a new thing all right guys before i let you go uh, I would just like to ask you, please, uh, that if you want to support this channel, and the best way to support this channel is by you simply hitting that, that like button on the bottom portion of your uh, cell phone there, okay? I would appreciate that very much. I know that a good portion, a good number of you uh, folks out there that watch my channel on a regular basis are not su subscribed. So I would appreciate also if you would uh, uh, reward me with a subscription, okay? I do this. Not for the money, because I don't make any money on this. I do this because you guys support me. Without your support, I it would not be possible. I would not be motivated or lack the motivation to go ahead with producing content for you guys to watch. So please, hit that subscribe button and push on that like button as well. Guys, enjoy this episode. And as always, let me know what you think, whether you agree or disagree, if my moves were right or wrong. I look forward to uh, reading your comments. Thanks for your support, guys. All right, guys, let's go ahead with Japan's uh, turn. Japan purchased, okay, uh, during its purchase uh, of, uh, phase of the game, Japan purchased one minor industrial complex, one naval transport, and one technological development for a total of, uh, let's see, uh, 7 plus 12, 19, 23 IPCs. So Japan will carry over a grand total of three IPCs for round two. Okay, I've gone ahead and uh, using my round elves, I've uh, marked the four battles that, I'll, that Japan will be uh, declaring. I've also gone ahead with the blue uh, chips indicating my non-combat movements later on during this uh, Japanese turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, review the combat movements that Japan will be making uh, this turn. All right, so for starters, uh, these two bombers that are already in Yunnan are actually coming over 
from mainland Japan. Okay, it's going to be at a movement of six spaces, and they will be carrying over two paratroops. Okay, so they're right there. Okay, those two paratroops are going to be uh, dropped into Yunnan as the first battle declared by the Japanese. The other three infantry and one uh, artillery division are coming from Kwangsi. All right, so there's another battle up in the north, the battle for uh, Yunnan. And here you have two Japanese infantry coming over. All right, you will also have the fighter from Formosa at a movement of three coming and joining the attack one, two, and three. This particular fighter will have one movement left in its gas gauge. Right? So now I'm not finished with that. I also have several other units that are joining that attack. And let's go, go over to the other side of, uh, of the map where we will continue the attack. All right. So now I have two tactical bombers that are going to go into that attack. They, they're going to uh, go one, two, and three. All right. They also have one movement left in their gas cage. The two fighters in Manchuria will also join that attack at a movement of one, two, and three. All the aircraft joining this particular attack are all moving at three and have one movement left in their gas cages. All right, let's go over to the Battle of Yunnan. I was forgetting that there's additional air support on that attack and the fighter, they're coming, that air support is coming from Kiang Su, you have one fighter and one tactical bomber at a movement of one, two, and three joining that attack. All right, so these aircraft will also have uh, one movement left in their gas gauges. All right, so so far all the aircraft are participating in the attacks in both Yunnan and Yunnan have one movement left in their gas gauges. All right, so the third battle is the battle for Amway, where you have for infantry moving in unopposed into Amway. Okay, so it's just a walk-in for the Japanese. The second, actually not the second, the fourth battle is the battle for Shahar, where you have two Japanese infantry divisions and one artillery divisions division moving into Shahar. Okay, and that's it for the, all four of the battles that are being declared by the Japanese. All right, so... I don't see any other attacks that I'm interested uh, at this point in time in performing against the allies, uh, including the Chinese, the British, or anybody else, or for that matter, the French. Okay, so I will go ahead then with the uh, resolve combat stage of uh, this uh, round, and it'll be just basically the two battles, the battles uh, for Yunnan and Yunnan. We'll be back shortly. with the resolve combat stage of uh, Japan's turn uh, the Japanese will be defending no correction the Chinese will be defending the province of Yunnan with four infantry which is reflected on my with my die here uh, which are four these are four die that will roll for the Chinese at two the Japanese in turn will be rolling 
we're attacking with uh, four at one, which represents the four infantry, uh, two at two, which represents the infantry or the artillery supported infantry that is uh, participating in the attack. And then you have a three and a four that re represent the fighter and tactical bomber in that attack. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make those rolls. And before I do so, let me just swing over and get my cup, my die cup that uh, you have here, my trusty cup that I use uh, for my uh, gaming purposes. All right, so here we go. I'm going to throw in my die. Okay, roll them. Well, really good. It is Japan's turn. Okay, so we have a total of one, two. Let me see. Actually, I think I got more than enough. That's uh, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's a total of six hits, more than enough to take out the Japanese, the Chinese defending the province of Yunnan. Now let's see how the Chinese fare in their defense. All right, so let's get my cup right there. The four. Infantry that are defending for the Chinese. There we go. The Chinese rolled, whoa, three hits. <laughs> extremely, extremely uh, well. Fantastic for the Chinese. Three hits out of four. All right, so, so let's remove the casualties. You have four Chinese casualties are out. And let's remove three Japanese infantry that are out. Okay, so... Having said that, the Japanese did secure the province of Yunnan and as expected. Okay, all right, let's uh, prepare for the Battle of Yunnan where you have two Japanese uh, infantry that are attacking. Let me make a little correction here. So I have this British infantry that fell. All right, so let's go back. You have two Japanese infantry that are attacking, right? And then you have... Two fighters at three. All right, two fighters at three, and two tactical bombers also participating in that attack at four. Okay, so I'm gonna reflect the that in my die right here. These are the Japanese attacks. The Chinese themselves are defending with two infantry. All right, and that'll be reflected here on the board. So that's two die for the Chinese and six die for the Japanese. All right, let's get my cup. Right. And let's roll, gentlemen. There we go. All right, so I got two, two hits. That's all I needed, folks. Two hits out of four, and it was actually my fighters, my tactical bombers that scored the hits all right so uh two hits let's bring over the two infantry that are defending the chinese infantry and let's see how they fare against the japanese there we go no hits blanks blanks okay so the two defending chinese infantry are now removed from hunan and the Japanese did not sustain any casualties in this battle up in the north. All right. So having said that, these were the only two battles that the Japanese were uh, declaring that actually required combat. The other two battles, the battles for Anwe and Shahar, were just simple walk-ins where the Japanese army uh, was simply not opposed at all. All right. So now... I'm going to then go ahead with my non-combat movements. All right, let me just uh, clear this area here. So I, let me remove my battle board. Some of these die. And I will go ahead then with the non-combat movements. All right, so these aircraft will go ahead and land in Quancy, the ones that participated in the attack on Hunan. Yunnan, excuse me. They all have a movement of one left. The fighters, uh, the aircraft that attacked in Hunan will also be landing in Quangxi. Okay, so I'm going to be placing them here. It's going to be, Quangxi is going to become a sort of staging area for the Japanese Air Force. 
All right, they also had one movement left in the gas gauge. All right, so uh, what other movements will I be making? Let me move all my Air Force first. This way I don't uh, forget anything uh, on the map that sometimes tends to occur. All right, so my Japanese fighter that is in Korea will move at a movement of four. Okay, so it'll, one, two. Let me see, one, two. This fighter will move into one, two, three, and four. It will land in Kiang Si. Okay, so that's at a movement of four. All right. My Japanese Air Force that is in Japan itself, in, uh, in Japan, in Tokyo, will move at a movement of five, and that'll be one, two, three, four and five so that entire group this air en entire air wing will land in Quancy as well okay here we go all right my fighter that is in okinawa all right let's move that blue chip let's remove the one in japan as well my fighter that is in okinawa will move at a movement of four it'll be one two, three, and four. All right, it will also land in Quincy, all right? Okay. My Japanese aircraft on the carriers located in C zone six, okay, will also take off. And they will go at a movement of four. That'll be one, two, let me see, hold on. A movement of one, two, uh, two, one, let me see, one. Now that'll go from C zone six, that's a one in 19, two in 20, three in 36, and four, excuse me, in Quancy. All right, so these guys will be also in Quancy. All right, I'm, I know I'm running out of space here, guys. I apologize. I have a pretty big map, but yet still not big enough to place all the aircraft that the Japanese have in one single territory. You know, mind you, I do have a pretty large map. So, uh, okay. So, the additional uh, aircraft that are, are in uh, off the coast of Carolina Islands in season 33, they will also take off. Okay. And we'll go over to... Quancy as well. That'll be one, two, three, and four. So they will land in Quancy as well. Okay. Um, let's do some land units. I believe I have already moved all of my air forces. So I will go ahead and make uh, my movements for my for my ground units. Uh, the Infantry, the two divisions in Siam will remain there. Okay. The two, the, the artillery division and infantry division in Kiang Si will move south into Quangxi and will defend, reinforce the aircraft in that uh, Chinese province that is held by Japan. All right. Uh, this infantry, the, this, uh, Group, uh, this infantry division and artillery division in Kiang Su will move south, okay, and will land in Kiang Si. All right. Um, what else? Let's go further up north. I think I have a few movements to make up there. Okay, my mechanized infantry in Manchuria will be move. Will be making a movement of two through Johar one. And two will end up in Shahar. My artillery in Manchuria will make a movement of one and end up in Jehol. Okay. Um, in addition, I will move one additional. I will move two infantry. Excuse me. Two infantry. Let me replace. Let me place replace this with a couple of chips. Okay, that'll be four. Five. Sorry about that. I kind of uh, 
panned out of sight there. So I'm moving two infantry into J hole as well from Manchuria. Okay. The four infantry divisions in Korea will move east and will end up in Manchuria as well. Okay. All right. What are the movements am I forgetting here for now? I don't see anything else. Now let's go on and I believe I have a few naval movements to uh, make. Uh, my naval transport in C Zone 6, the Japanese naval transport will pick up one infantry and one armored unit and will sail at a movement of one, two, and three, end up in C Zone 36 and it will drop off the armored unit into Quangxi and the infantry as well, okay, in Quangxi. All right, I apologize for the abrupt movements there. It's actually not easy to coordinate both movements uh, while moving and placing and removing chips and units on the game table, all along while narrating uh, the entire uh, uh, episode, as uh, my teammates and opponents well know. All right, guys, so what else? Okay, the Naval Transport, Season 19. We'll pick up one infantry in Kiangsu, another infantry in Okinawa. We'll sail south at a movement of two, and we'll drop off and addition these forces and further reinforce Quangxi. All right. All right, there we go. Uh, okay, that's done. Let's remove these blue chips because these have already been moved. All right. All right. My Japanese fleet in season 20 will move south and reinforce season 36. Same thing with my uh, my Japanese fleet in season 19 off the coast of Okinawa will move south at a movement of two and reinforce season 36 as well. My fleet. Uh, off the coast of Caroline Islands will move west at a movement of three. There's a naval base in Caroline Islands which allows me to move west. That'll be at a movement of three. One, two, and three. And we'll reinforce season 36 uh, once again. All right, so now my fleet up north, same thing. All these ships have a movement of three. One, two, and three and we'll reinforce the main fleet now and what you're gonna have here is a massive Japanese fleet that will be coalesced in this region okay all righty Okay, so what am I forgetting here? I pretty much have moved, moved the far majority of my uh, land, uh, units already. I think I'm ready to then go ahead and place my newly purchased units. Then I will, have, shortly after that, I will uh, do a video recap. I'll, but I'll do that after I, after I reorganize or organize my, my units or game pieces on the table this way it'll be easier for not only uh, you guys but for me to read as well okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to place by the way I I don't know if I mentioned but I did buy a uh, an, uh, what is it a weapons uh, technology or development for Japan I think I did mention it just for some reason maybe I, I forgot in any case my newly purchased minor industrial complex will go in Guangzhou in Shanghai, Kiangsu, uh, correction. My naval transport will go in Japan, season six, okay? And of course, let's not forget my technology, my, my uh, R&D, research and development for my technology. And uh, that, of course, you guys don't know which technology I've chosen, uh, which, cho which technology I've picked uh, uh, for Japan. All right. All right, guys, I'll be back shortly with the recap video uh, for you guys uh, to see, okay? Just sit tight for now. 
All right, guys, I pretty much set up uh, the board here, cleaned it up a bit for me to do my recap uh, portion of the video. Um, I just noticed, though, that, uh, and I hope you guys don't mind, but I did notice that I left my air, my carriers uh, unprotected. So if none of you have any issues with that uh, as a late movement here, I will land a few of my fighters in uh, on my carriers. Reason being that I know that uh, our wild card man, Sire Blood, uh, may get the idea of potentially uh, attacking <laughs> my my fleet here in season 36. So I'm going to place four carry four fighters on my carriers uh, uh, in season 36. Okay, if any of you have an issue with that, let me know, and I can always ch uh, modify that. Okay, but uh, we pretty much have been very lenient with each other uh, in what is it uh, in this game and past previous games as far as being sticklers for tech, uh, technicalities of this sort. All right, so let me um, review what my, uh, what my, the, what is it, the, the recap portion of the video. So in Siam, I will have two infantry, all right? Uh, Yunnan, I have two infantry, one artillery, okay? In Quangxi, I have four infantry, one artillery, and one armored unit. Okay, as for my air force, I'll have two bombers. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tactical bombers. That's eight tactical bombers and one, two, three, four, five, six fighters. So that's two strategic bombers, eight tactical bombers, and six fighters. All right. Season 36, all right, I have three naval transports, three carriers with four fighters on board, okay? I also have two cruisers, two battleships, four destroyers, and two submarines uh, that uh, make up the Japanese fleet off the coast of Hainan, which is Season 36. Okay, it can see you have one infantry, one artillery, one fighter. In Kiangsu, I have one minor industrial complex. In Amway, I have four infantry, one artillery. Okay, up north in Shahar, I have two infantry, one artillery, one mechanized infantry. In Jehol, I have two infantry, one artillery piece. In Manchuria, I have uh, five, six, seven, eight infantry and one triple A. In Japan proper, I have three AAAs, uh, two, three, four infantry, and two artillery. Season six, I have one naval transport, okay? And I believe that pretty much covers um, the entirety of uh, my occupied territories. All right, so Japan started out with 26 IPCs, Japan. We'll collect an additional one, two, three, and four, right? So that's four IPCs in addition to Japan's 26, that's 30, all right? Uh, I am not at war with the USA or the Allies, so I get uh, a national objective of an additional 10 points, which brings me up to 40 IPCs. I did carry over three IPCs that I did not spend from... Uh, this turn, so Japan has in its treasury for next uh, for round two a total of forty three IPCs uh, in its treasury. All right, so that's about it, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm always open to uh, opinions, and obviously the world is full of opinions. And let me know if you think I'm doing the right thing, or if you think I should have uh, dealt with this particular turn in a different manner. I know that some uh, uh, my my uh, allies or my, yes, my allies were making suggestions that maybe I should go with a J1, okay? But uh, I chose rather to be more of a conservative, uh, take up more of a conservative approach and decided then to leave the U.S. Out of, out of the war for at least for round one, okay? I felt that it was the best course of action for now. Okay, so let me know what you guys think. I always look forward to your commentaries, and I very much appreciate them. And uh, guys, as always, uh, don't forget to uh, bunker down and play. Until next time, it is, uh, I believe, uh, 
the uh, USA's turn. 